Welcome to Desk Geek. Look at this desktop. Isn't it beautiful? Powered by Manjaro. Manjaro, however you pronounce it. It doesn't matter. This is an incredible distribution. Manjaro, if you don't know, is based on Arch Linux. It is definitely a more advanced distribution. So I don't want to say it's difficult because it's not, but you have to be persistent if you want to use Manjaro. And the, the reason is you can change pretty much anything in here you want. There is so much customization capabilities and there are a lot of options in there. So until you f fully learn Linux and kind of start to understand how things work, uh, how the file system's laid out, how to remove and add software, maybe a little dabbling in the terminal, it's definitely not for everybody. But if you're technically persistent, as I think they say on their website, even if you're new to Linux, this is a great distro. Some of the things right off the bat that I want to tell you about that I love, and I've, I used Manjaro in the past, and then I went back to Mint, and I went back to Ubuntu, and then I think I went back to Mint. But the problem I have with Mint is a continuation of screen tearing issues from the wallpaper in the background for the work that I do. So recording with OBS for whatever reason in Mint, the screen tearing is terrible. In Ubuntu, which I think is a fantastic distribution, and I know a lot of Linux people don't like Ubuntu, but the problem I have with it is the constant system error reporting popping up every five seconds. But outside of that, that's an exaggeration, probably every couple of hours. But it, it's obnoxious enough, and I know that someone had told me, well, it's kind of how the system's built to report any issues so that people can fix them. But it, for somebody who's productive on their desktop, I don't want to see those errors, and they don't stop anything. The system never stops. The games continue to play. You can still use your program, so it's not like a crash or a blue screen of death, but it's just kind of something I don't want to see on a regular basis. So Mint doesn't have that problem. It works perfectly, but I've got the screen tearing issue. But I love Ubuntu and I love Mint. So if you're not recording yourself constantly, those two issues aren't going to be a problem and they're great beginner distributions. Now, Manjaro, on the other hand, it adds a whole new flavor to everything. If you're hearing that revving of an engine down there, that's my CBR600 that I just bought. Now it's just a guy on chainsaw cutting up logs because we had a bunch of stuff fall down. But in any case, the reason why I've gone back to Manjaro is, one, my experience level with Linux has started to increase as I've been using it for a long time now. Well, not a long time, but longer than I had when I started the 30 Days of Linux series, for instance. So I'm getting more comfortable with the terminal, the file system, and how things work within Linux. And Manjaro also has support right out of the box for the NVIDIA products. Now, on Ubuntu and others, you actually have to go under drivers and then you have to change it to proprietary drivers. And Manjaro Linux or NVIDIA is already loaded in there for you. So it automatically will switch to that. The installation is a little more complex as well. Ubuntu by far and Mint have the cleanest, easiest installations you can do. So that's why I recommend them as great intros. It's the, the menu selections, very simplified. You know exactly what you're changing and not changing within it. Manjaro's is a good installation system, don't get me wrong, but slightly more advanced, I would say, and you have the opportunity you could really screw something up. Um, but besides that, Manjaro has all kinds of customization capabilities here in widgets and panels. So if you go over here and you click add widgets, you've got all of these options of things you can put on your desktop for quick launchers, for weather, for Bluetooth, for clocks, CP load. CPU load and memory usage and all the things that you may have come accustomed to say in a Windows environment are all here and super easy to install. Number two, it has access to all of the software that you want through its repository and its repository is quite awesome. So if we just type in software here, it's going to pull up something called Octopi, which is basically a graphical user interface for Pac-Man or what you would use in the terminal to install something. So for instance, if I want Blender, I can just go here, choose Blender, right click, click install, and I'll have Blender installed in my system and the dependent packages that it needs. Up here is the Yort tool. Yort, Yort, whatever. Looks like yogurt almost to me. You just change it to yogurt, it'd be easy to remember. 
But the yard. So that's another arch repository for you to go through and get additional packages in. Uh, I believe those are the unofficial packages for Manjaro they're considered, but they're there for you. So if you want to down some, download something like Google Chrome, etc., you can type in Google Chrome here in your typical uh, repository. You're not going to see anything. But if I click the little green alien and I type in Google Chrome, it will pop up here and you've got all kinds of options for Chrome. And I've already installed, there's Google Chromium, Chrome, no, no, Chrome, where are you? There it is. Oh, it's Google Dash Chrome. <laughs> Let's get my point. Everything's there, everything. So that's one thing that makes Manjaro very easy is you really don't have to touch the terminal. You don't have to uh, at all. It can work just like what you may be used to in a Windows machine. Installation a little more complex and again you can mess with a lot of different settings in here Which is what makes it slightly more advanced the menu system is brilliant You want to type something in it automatically searches as you start typing You don't have to launch a separate search or click your cursor in a search You just start typing and it automatically goes there you have multiple workspaces and That is genius so you can have some applications on one desktop or workspace You can click the next workspace and have something else up. So if you're working on um editing a video plus you want to try to find other videos on another screen or you've got gimp up because you're doing some edits or audacity and speak today then you would have that there uh, steam works beautifully gaming works beautifully no screen tearing absolutely gorgeous everybody when i was doing the 30 days of linux recommended manjaro it was a very very uh, heavily recommended distribution for me to try out and test at that time, my skill level probably wasn't ready for it, but I still loved it. And now that I'm back in it, as I've spent some more time in other distributions, I'm just in love, like literally in love. It is beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Even the way the sound system and settings are set up, you can easily change what sound device you want to use based on applications. So when that application launches, let's say I'm listening to YouTube, I want it to launch on my Scarlet through the headphone jack there, but maybe when I'm listening to Tidal, I want it to launch through my USB interface so I can have it launch through there, which is just brilliant. Uh, if I want to play a game, I want it to launch through my speakers. I can have that set up. Everything is customizable, and that's what makes this such a beautiful desktop. Uh, I just can't say enough good things about it. It comes pre-packed with tons of software, and everything that I needed from Caden Live, Blender, uh, Torque wasn't there, but Torque's not in any distribution. He's downloaded from the website. It all worked and all executes without any issue whatsoever. And it's a very fast and snappy operating system. I don't think it feels heavy at all. Things move very quickly. Um, OBS works fantastically. As you can see, no screen tearing or issues there. It automatically recognized my 144 hertz monitor, my 1080 NVIDIA GeForce video card. All of that was out of the box. All my sound systems from the Scarlett 2i2 to the FIO DAC to the sound card in my system itself. It knew about it right away. Uh, I don't have anything that I can think of that I would do differently in this operating system. It literally is that good. I'm not exaggerating. Um, you can do a lot of customization here. When you go to configure desktop, you can change your wallpapers and all that stuff like you're used to, your mouse, your tweaks and those type of things. But outside of that, there's just tons of customization that you can do here within the menu system itself to add widgets, to add different layers of menus down below to do all those type of things. And that's where if you don't know what you're doing, you can quickly start adding different menus and things in different places and not know how to get rid of them. Simple Google search would get rid of it, but if you get annoyed with that stuff quickly, that may be why this is kind of a more advanced um, system. And there are more advanced Linux distributions. So I get asked the question a lot. What is my favorite Linux distribution? After 30 days of Linux, I had tons of people coming to me saying that they were switching and converting to Linux, which makes me so happy because it means those videos really inspired them to try Linux. But the distribution I usually always recommend is Ubuntu or Mint. 
And the reason is they're just the simplest for new people to get into and play with and very hard to break. Very simple menu systems, very familiar to Windows environment. Manjaro is so close to being the exact same way and all the enhancements that they've made to it over the last few months have really made it so that I think even though you can get in some trouble with it, that this would not be a bad distro to start off with, especially if you want something very familiar and very powerful uh, if you have a higher end system, if you're running a lower end system, again, probably still stick with Ubuntu and uh, Mint. Not that this couldn't run on a lower end system, but uh, you're not going to get the full enjoyment out of it. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to kind of let you guys know that you're going to be seeing Manjaro on my system going forward. Why I chose that. It's definitely out of all the distros that I've tried. And I tried OpenSUSE before this. That was very recommended as well. Um, that just did not work for me at all. Um, I'm not, I wasn't a big fan of it, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's probably fantastic. It may be even above my skill level, which is why I didn't get it. It seemed to be okay, but I just had way too many issues with video card and sound implementation and all of that for my current setup. Whereas Manjaro was just, it was straight cut. And for that matter, so was Mint and so was Ubuntu. Um, so OpenSUSE wasn't quite ready for me. So my favorite distro out of everyone I've tried, and I've tried a lot and spent time with and actually installed and not run through a virtual machine, Manjaro, Manjaro, whatever you want to call it, it's the best thing out there. It is absolutely, without a doubt, a Windows killer. Amazing job. To the developers, the creators of Manjaro, to all those who have helped contribute to its success, I love you guys and gals because what you have done here is absolutely incredible. What a beautiful operating system. Go check it out. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't get this far. Don't get like the video.